produced by Victoire. Victoire gives a special thanks to the EWF, Empire Wrestling Federation, and Mr. Jesse Hernandez, as well as SoCal Wrestling TV. Find the app on Roku. Welcome back, viewers, to another episode of Style in the Podcast. I am your host, Emir, along with my co-host and tag team partner, WWE and AEW superstar, ladies and gentlemen, Rico Costantino. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Having a wonderful day. It's a great day in America. It is a great day, America. We are blessed indeed to be here, blessed to be alive today. Rico, what would look good for us before we begin this episode? Oh, you got to lay the smack down on that subscribe button. Oh, don't hesitate. Initiate. That's right. And hit the like button, too. That's right. Hit the like button. Share with your friends and family. We greatly appreciate it. Rico, I see that you have changed location again. You are yes. back. Where are you now? I'm at Chateau Rico. Chateau Rico. That's right. As you see the kids in the background. Yep. Look see? at them. Enjoying. Yeah, they're enjoying their wonderful life in spring water and gourmet fish food. Oh, yes. yes. I, only my kids get the best. Lifestyles of the rich and famous comes yes. to there, Rico. Yes, absolutely. Rico, we're going to do a couple of announcements and then we're going to get into it because you look distinctly different as well today, but we'll get into that in a moment. So what makes you say that? Well, well, we'll, we'll get we'll get to that in a moment, Rico. Okay. Give you one moment to give the announcements. Coming, yeah. ac coming across your screen right now, you will see the brand new Style in the Podcast t-shirts. They will be available for pre-order in the month of November. And also, as a reminder to our viewers out there, we are on Patreon. You'll find the link in the description of this video. Starting in the month of November, you will find exclusives there. So make sure you go over there and subscribe. And of course, Super Chats. We've been asked about Super Chats. They will be coming soon. Right now, we're still in the process of developing, expanding, and building our audiences. So when the appropriate moment comes, you will be the first to know about that. But now, back to the show. So as I was saying, Rico, you are wearing a rather nice-looking tracksuit, as we would call them in the UK, tracksuit jacket. And I do believe I see American Gladiators logo on that added S jacket one and only tv worn wow competition TV. worn wow there you the go. original that's the original now you know rico we had a request from one of our subscribers to have you in the original uh american gladiator get up garb so really? I'm, I'm sure to our viewer out there i'm sure that's making your day right now uh, we do want to apologize, though. We did bill that we would have Lori Fetrick ice on this episode of Stalin. However, due to circumstances outside of our control, she was unable to be with us today. But that's not going to stop us. We're oh, still going to be we're still going to be going in a deep dive in American Gladiators. And right now, across your screen, you will see photographs of Rico Constantino when he was involved in the American Gladiators. He was a competitor. He was a champion in 1990 and 91. And uh, you'll see some imagery right there across your screen. Rico, what was it like being not only a competitor in such a revolutionary, the first, actually the first uh, reality show, t TV show in the US. What was it like being involved with that production? Take us back. Well, I remember, like I said, I was hurt in construction. <laughs> excuse me and i was laying on the couch and this is after the pilot season which they count as season one and gemini came on the screen and says all contenders are you ready for the ultimate challenge try out for american gladiators and i went oh my gosh he's talking to me yeah he's talking to me so i went and i started rehabbing myself watching old tapes of the pilot season, watching the gladiators, what they can do, just like NFL uh, watches film. Mm -hmm. I watched film and then I uh, did 
exercises and stuff to mimic it, like uh, for the wall, I would climb uh, the inside of a baseball mm -hmm. backstop to simulate that. I do 40 yard dashes on the beach in tennis shoes and beach sand, uh, run up a hill, jog down, anything to get myself in shape. Mm -hmm. And I, th I believe they went to four cities that year. And I think there was 12 to 15,000 people that tried out mm -hmm. in all those cities. I tried out universal cause that was close to home. And they picked 20 men and 20 women out of all those people. And I was chosen as a contestant. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only a contestant, uh, the producer, who was Aton Keller, walked up to me after I finished my interview. Yeah. With the contestant. He goes, I want you to try out over here. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, uh, what's this? He goes, well, we're replacing two gladiators. And we'll see if you fit there. Mm -hmm. So I went through that tryout and he told me after that, he said, we'll send you a letter whether we want you as a contender or a, a gladiator. Yeah. Well, the letter came and I was a contender, which I was quite excited about. And what motivated me is that Samuel Goldwyn, Universal Studios, Four Point, deemed these five guys as the best athletes in the world mm -hmm. best athletes so my motivation was okay i want to see how i measure up yeah so i took my measuring stick and i went to the gladiators to see how i measured up yeah with all these events yeah and uh god willing and god's blessing i became champion ball champion 1991 you became champion indeed rico do you still have the belt because we see that we saw the image come across the screen do you have the belt well that was the first belt okay that was the first belt and i didn't know anything about championship belts only from boxing so that was the original the black with the silver mm -hmm. but after i got into wrestling i wanted to upgrade yeah so you want to see the 2.0 version? The 2.0 version. Of American Gladiator Championship. I don't know. Fans, what do you say? I think they're saying a resounding yes, Rico. Let us see right. 2.0 version. Here Here's the 2.0 version. Look at that. He's got the t-shirt. Wow. There it is. Rico, that looks like a WWE title right there. This is the 2.0 90, 91. Yeah. My name, yeah. American Gladiator Champion. Wow. That is a beautiful belt, Rico. That is a beautiful title belt right there. Yep. Wow. And I have my original worn in between events because yeah. they have a tank top. Yeah. And so in between events, I wore this. So this is an original yeah. Gladiator shirt. Rico, I've got to ask, how did you keep this clothing in such mint condition after all those years? I don't know. I guess I pack well. Yeah, <laughs> you, you do pack well. And again, I'm looking at the sleeves, much like your WWE, the red with the black striped shirt. Not much stretch on the arms either. So it's it's maintained its integrity, right? Yes, it, it has. It's well, I don't I don't take it out and wear it. Yeah. public a lot so yeah. uh special occasions i take it out um you know um i don't know if you know this but uh with the gladiators uh they told me when i was a contender if you win your season you get to come back as an american gladiator you got promoted that's correct yeah. and so not only did i want to win but i wanted to come back as a gladiator Mm -hmm. You know, uh, unfortunately, the creator and I did not get along at all. Ferraro. Okay. And so after I won, I called him on it mm -hmm. and he resoundedly said, no, you'll never be a gladiator. Wow. So I said, OK. And that's when I developed that first championship belt. And I said, OK, but I'm going to make it a positive. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I got in touch with. 
about 10 different children charities. And I donated my time to these charities to appear because gladiators exploded in 1991, exploded. It was, I was on the front page of the Orange County Register, color picture and everything. They did a big story on me. So I went to muscular dystrophy, diabetes, cystic fibrosis, Special Olympics, mm -hmm. Orange County Burn Unit. You know, and I even became the spokesman for the D.A.R.E. program in the city of Fontana, California. And I think at that time we graduated the largest class, which was over 10,000 children that went through the program yeah. and graduated. Yeah. What an accomplishment. But yes, yeah, so you took that. You took that notoriety that you'd garnered from American Gladiators and by yourself, self-funded. I want your viewers to understand this. You know, self-funded, selfless act. You went around and you used that to help uh, organizations, charities, and children's groups like that. That is absolutely fantastic. Would you say that the American Gladiators was a nucleus for a change in the way we we view entertainment? What were your thoughts that on that? Oh, yeah. I believe it was the first reality show out there because mm -hmm. Gladiators was real. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Gladiators were, were competing for pride. I was competing to win the 10 grand and be champion. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have to beat the Gladiators in each event, you got to get more points than the contender right. to advance. And it was a round robin tournament. Preliminary round, quarterfinal, semifinal, and final. Mm -hmm. But there was a loser's bracket. So the guy I beat my first time in the preliminary, he won everything in the loser's bracket, and I ended up facing him in the championship bracket. Okay. He was that good of an athlete. His name was John Adams. John Adams. Uh, real, real down-to-earth guy. Uh, good athlete. Mm -hmm. Very good athlete. And I had to change my game plan because he already knew my strategy from the first time I faced him. Yeah. So I had to develop a new strategy to beat him in the championship round. Speaking of strategies, Rico, do you have to, I mean, it's a natural feeling to have fear in life, right? We know that. Um, was there anyone in particular that you had you were fearful of going against? Were there some loose cannons in there? Or is that something you have to push out of your mind entirely and just focus on what you're doing? Well, from the tapes that I viewed, uh, Nitro, Danny Clark was kind of a hit and miss. He would take advantage, not take advantage. Mm -hmm. So I, I kept my eye on Nitro. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Star, Laser was very good. Uh, Gemini was just a Hulk. Mm -hmm. You know, he he, he played uh, NFL football. So he came from there. Mm -hmm. And from the pilot to the season I went to, they got rid of Titan and Malibu. And they brought in Turbo and Thunder. Yeah. And Turbo was 260, Thunder was 280, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so when I was preparing, watching film on everybody, what they were good at, what they weren't good at, uh, I figured Turbo and Thunder's newness would cancel out because I'm new. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have the experience that Nitro, Gemini, and Laser had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I figured, you know. Yeah. So, no, but no real fear, though, of anyone in particular. No, I fear no, nobody, especially in competition. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like cheaters. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like somebody taking advantage. Mm -hmm. And at one time, uh, and I'm not bad mouthing him, uh, we were doing Powerball, and uh, I tried to dunk the ball in the, the, the cone, but I missed. And Nitro took me and he German suplexed me after I didn't have the ball. Mm. And I went, okay, all right, I'm going to talk to him afterwards. Yeah. So I got him and I said, hey, Dan, whistle to whistle, do what you need. But if I don't have the ball and you do something like that again, we're going to blows. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, that's what you, 
just what you were talking about, Rico, to, to stress yeah. again, you know, American Gladiators was not a scripted show. No, I, it wasn't. I was duped into believing it was as a youngster. But no, as you're you're informing the audience, and as we found out with the documentary, the Netflix documentary, it's done very, very well, by the way. Mus oh, yes. Muscles and Mayhem. Now, I know you've watched that, Rico. I've oh, yeah. I've watched pretty much the entire thing. Um, pretty, there's some pretty scandalous stuff that went on behind the scenes. Um, a, a lot of uh, a lot of that Hollywood uh, big promises, uh, no delivery uh, seems yeah. to occur behind the scenes. There was one individual in particular that struck me as being it was very disturbing. Uh, he seemed to be obsessed with, um, you know, um, uh, sex. I, I don't even like to use the word here live, but but that's what he. You know, he seemed to be a very promiscuous type uh, behind the scenes. So there was some scandals and controversy involved. Um, but they did mention there one thing I wanted to bring up, because you and I talked about this off camera. In, in contrast, the Gladiators in the UK, which debuted in 1992, I was a big fan of that. It was very much like WWE in many yeah. but. In the documentary Muscles and Mayhem, I think they showed a commercial where they were trying to actually outdo WWE. Their whole idea behind American Gladiators was to. So, it, it, by saying that, was there a lot of. Um, um, was there any acting vol involved in American Gladiators? Because you say it was real, but was there no, any. On like, my season, I, yeah. I, I, the pilot season, oh. they count as season one. Mm -hmm. But it was a pilot season. I came in in season two, okay. had a new producer, Aton Keller, and he did America's Funniest Home Videos yeah. with Bob Saget. So you know how successful that man is. Yeah. So from the first season, as they call it, the pilot, mm -hmm. they focused more on the gladiators. Mm -hmm. And then Aton came in and said, well, the people are not going to be interested in just gladiators. So he started focusing on the contenders, where they came from, what their lifestyle was, what athletic background, what made them tick, mm -hmm. you know, and why did they come out for American gladiators? Yeah. And that drew in the audience because we were everyday people. Yeah. You know, trying to do this competition. Mm -hmm. And if you were a weekend warrior, you got trounced. Yeah. You had to be in shape and had to be some kind of athlete mm -hmm. to even do this show. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that it takes 10 hours to do one show. It's yeah. not like an hour or 45 minutes. You know, uh, Universal Studios is where I was. They would, you know, bring the tour and people would come in and watch some of it. And then they get ushered out and a new tour bus would come in yeah. and they'd usher them out. And then we went to lunch. Everybody went to lunch together and OSHA was there making sure all the apparatus was put together safe so nobody mm -hmm. would have an accident. Mm -hmm. And then we came and finished the day, Yeah, you know, but uh, after the preliminary and the quarters, people started to get their favorite contender and they, they wouldn't leave. Mm -hmm. They would stay for the whole 10 hours. Yeah. And I don't know what sparked it, but in my season, they were holding Rico signs and cheering me. And I got along really good with Larry Zonka mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it was it, it was just amazing. It was an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. We only did it for about 10 to 12 days, mm -hmm. which filmed the spring and the fall. Mm -hmm. And then it aired later. Yeah. You know, but you couldn't tell anybody you were a champion until after it aired. So we were all on a gag order. Yeah. What was your favorite uh, contest in the show? Joust. The Joust? Joust. The Joust. And by the way, I will interject right here, Rika. Rika and I were talking off camera. And just so everybody knows out there, Rico said even today he would go back to American Gladiators and joust. Just I to, would joust. Just FYI. So, so, at 63, I would joust. Yeah. And I believe you'd be very successful, Rico. Um, uh, the UK version. Are you familiar with it, Rico? No. Okay. So the UK version, as I said, it was held in the UK. So again, for our American audience, I believe it was held at the Birmingham NEC. 
and it came on TV every Saturday night. It was a fairly big arena. In fact, that arena hosted WWE several times as they came for UK Rampage tours. And we had some popular characters. Shadow was one. I remember Wolf was another oh. one. And he was. So did Wolf come to the US? Because you know of Wolf. Oh, so did he come out here? I don't know him. I just didn't like his presentation because it was too WWE presentation. That's not what this competition's about. Right. It's about man against man. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you don't need to put that acting in and that over, you know, you beat somebody in a competition. Okay. You'd be a good sport about it. You yeah. don't, you don't celebrate and yell at the camera and raise your hand to the audience. Yeah. You know, you don't do that. That's not what American gladiators was about. Right. And uh, to me, Wolf had no, no right to do that and just he was trying to promote himself and that's my personal opinion mm -hmm. he and was, he was uh, a scoundrel well to me in mm -hmm. fact when they came here and he, he was part of the show when hulk hogan and uh muhammad ali's daughter mm -hmm. were hosting it i called hulk yeah i said terry i'll come there for free mm -hmm. i will do it free just mm -hmm. let me face that guy. Yeah. I want to teach him a lesson. Wow. And I, 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 but I never got called, but I said, I want to, I'll do it free. Well, you know I don't what? I care about a championship, nothing. Rico, we've got an international platform right here. So, Wolf, if you happen to watch this, because we're going to be tagging the, the UK gladiators in this, which actually, coincidentally, they rebooted in 2024. I was shocked to find out they rebranded it, rebooted it. So, Wolf, if you're listening and you you think that you can hang with Rico, check out that uh, email address in the description of this video. Send me an oh, email. Oh yeah, come on. Send me, a, send me an email. Come on to the show, and we'll yeah. see if, we'll see if you still got it. All right. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Challenge Don't, put out. Challenge sent, Wolf. You any type of man, if you're any type of man, you'll answer. Yeah. Because I'll tell you what, I just, I need to tell you what's on my mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He thinks he's a WWE superstar, huh? Well, yeah. We're I've looking, been that. Yeah. I've been there, done it. Yeah. Not just a WWE, an AEW superstar. Yeah. Too now. Write no. that in there. I'm Stop. calling him out. Thank you, Amir. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Amir. Yep. Thank you. We're calling Call him out. out. We're calling him out. So, um, but Rico, I wanted to touch a little bit more about working with kids. Cause again, it's such a, I mean, I'm just floored that you took your contest winning monies and you just poured that into, to working with children charity. So tell us where did that motivation come from to do that? I, it, the show was <laughs> such a hit. At mm -hmm. that time in Southern California, like mm -hmm. I said, uh, the Orange County Register put me on the front page mm -hmm. and I've never been to a baseball game. And I went to uh, California Angels versus the Minnesota Twins. And it was Little League Day. Mm -hmm. And I sat down with my friends and we were watching. And this is after the championship appeared. And. Kids were looking back. People were looking back. And they started coming up asking for my autograph. And I said, okay. So I signed a couple of mitts, a couple of balls, hats. And then it, then it started to get really intense where there was a crowd. Mm -hmm. Well, the ushers came down and said, you can't do this. I said, I'm not doing a thing. I'm trying to enjoy the baseball game. Mm -hmm. He goes, well, this can't happen. I said, you tell him it can't happen. I'm not going to tell people and be a snob. So he goes, well, we got to move you to the, the tunnel. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, move me to the tunnel. So I went in the tunnel and the crowd grew. And they go, after a while, they said, well, we can't have you in the tunnel no more. I said, I paid money to watch a baseball game. So they took me to the press box. And I was up there with all the press people and I'm watching the game and the press people started questioning me and 
talking about gladiators and stuff like that. So I wasn't even watching the game. Mm -hmm. So I saw the first inning and I saw the last out. Okay. And I remember the last out. The guy bunted and he ran to first base and he would, he slid into first base, but tagged out. So that's my only baseball experience. Mm -hmm. So I took that and I said, well, if, if I'm getting that much uh, recognition mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm a Christian mm -hmm. and I believe in giving back, mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I'm going to contact children charities because I love children. And some of the kids have a really hard time with some of these conditions. Mm -hmm. And so I just put my name out there Yeah, and I, I did uh, muscular dystrophy, cerebral palsy, diabetes, Special Olympics. Special Olympics always had my heart. Yeah. Uh, because win, lose, or draw, everybody gets a hug. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. and uh, Orange County Burn Unit, mm -hmm. you know, and I became a, a spokesman for the city of Fontana mm -hmm. for DARE. Yeah. And I was going up there all the time, helping with the DARE program, and at that time, I don't know what's happened lately, but we graduated 10,000 kids yeah. who passed the program. That's yeah. not counting parents mm -hmm. and family, but yeah. it was 10,000 youth that yeah. graduated the D.A.R.E. program. Yeah. I think, and, it's, so, sorry, Rico, I was just going to say, I think it's so important. And, and I've seen children like this, even at, at, at our events. Um they are captivated by individuals yeah. who do these sorts of things and become cartoon characters. And I think it's important for anybody, you know, not preaching to anybody, but I think it's so important when God does give you a platform to be able to give back and give something positive because yeah. you're in that position for a reason. It's, yeah. you know, and if it happens, especially, I mean, you know, if you, if you feel driven to that, or if it happens by chance, I mean, look at your life, Rico, I'm going to, I'm going to go over it again. I mean, you've done so many different professions and God has opened up so many doors for things. I mean, you were involved not only in pro wrestling, but American gladiators. Uh, we're going to be talking about Hollywood again in a few weeks. You were stunt man, you know, universal studios. You play the, the Batman, the Michael Keaton, Batman, um, so many things that you were involved with and things that you went for too. We talked off camera about, uh, was it Conan you went for, uh, yeah. the TV show? Um, it was Conan, Hercules, right? Hercules. Well, I, I, had, I auditioned for Hercules, the right. series. You auditioned for uh, Hercules. Yeah. And Mr. Sorbo beat me out. Mr. Sorbo. Yes. We will be reaching out to Mr. Sorbo actually. Yeah. So we will see if he'll, he'll be a guest with us on the show, but yeah, it's so important to go out and then and to give back. And I think that's something that um, I think it happens a lot in, in the culture, but I'm not sure if it happens enough. Um, you know, that's just my, but, but I did tell the people one thing mm -hmm. I demanded one thing out of all those charities, all those appearances, you know what it was? What was it Rico? Feed me, feed me, feed me, not just feed buy me lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well you know you know who's gonna who's gonna have to buy you lunch and that's gonna be wolf because when he comes oh. on when he comes on this show because he will i've got a feeling i'll use some of my british influence when he comes on this show you're gonna eat him up and spit him out you're gonna you're gonna oh. be the one to tear his tear him to shreds rica oh. i was now as a kid i will tell you this when i used to watch gladiators of a saturday night in the uk i was I like the wolf, but here's why. Because like you said, he was like a WWE character. I always wondered, like, some of those guys could have crossed over to wrestling so easily and taken those have. characters. Um, but And and you know what? Yeah. Uh, not totally trashing Wolf, but no. Wolf could have. He could have. He could have crossed over. He had, he had what it took. Yeah. You know, he had talent. I just didn't like where he did it and his timing mm. because you to me it disrespected the sport of american gladiators because right. that was a real event yeah 
you know, now if you want to go for wrestling, I have no problem with that, Wolf. Mm -hmm. But know your place. Yeah. You're a gladiator. Mm -hmm. And those original gladiators, Gemini, Turbo, Laser, Thunder, Nitro, they they forged the ground. They plowed so you could do what you could do. Mm. Don't disrespect them mm -hmm. because these guys were all athletes, mm -hmm. you know, and they were really good at it. Yeah. And uh, they gave more than I gave. I only had to compete five times. Mm -hmm. They were going out season after season, show after show, and going against many different people mm -hmm. and the wear and tear on their bodies. My mm -hmm. God. I yeah. can't even imagine, yeah. you know, uh, what it did to him. Yeah. I, but when I saw Muscles of Mayhem, it put it in perspective. Yeah. And like I said, I was supposed to be a gladiator, mm -hmm. according to what was said to me. Mm -hmm. But I think God stepped in and made this guy not like me and say, no, you're not going to be a gladiator. Yeah. And after I saw Muscles of Mayhem, I thank God I never became a gladiator. Well, you know, yeah, Rico, you went on to do, and you still are doing tremendous, great things um, beyond gladiators. But I think what had happened by 92, 93, when it came to the UK, um, is the production values were there. Like I said, if, you know, if any of our viewers are encouraged you just to go and do a search on YouTube, you'll see, UK gladiators, 1992, 93, you'll see it was a far cry from the origins of the American. Cause even looking at your logo right there, American gladiators, it looks more serious. When you look at the UK gladiator, it looks like almost like a Superman emblem. It's a metal G with an, all these sharp points on it and stuff. It was a lot more flamboyant when it yeah. got to the UK. Um, but again, I think it was, uh, it was purposeful. I think they set out to do that originally. Um, yeah. Well, I know that Aton was not the producer anymore. Okay. So Once he... Aton Keller left, his ideas went with him. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, I believe Mr. Keller put that show on the map when he took over after the first season. Mm -hmm. He's just uncanny. Mm -hmm. And I got to work with Mr. Keller a second time. Okay, where was that? Uh he was uh there's a there's a show in france mm -hmm. called the keys to fort boyard mm -hmm. okay and it's held on a fort that napoleon bonaparte built in the ocean to, to protect the coast of bordeaux city of la rochelle so he got wind of this mm -hmm. and he uh he had tryouts for this show because he wanted America to go there and it was called Conquer Fort Boyard. Mm -hmm. Chris Berman and Kathy Lee Crosby were the uh, uh, announcing team. So, of course, I saw this and I went out for it. And during Gladiators, like I said, there's a fall champion and a spring champion. Mm -hmm. And then those two face each other for the grand championship. Okay. Well, I received a concussion on the night I won the championship and the grand championship is filled the next day. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, I can't go because I got a concussion. They said, well, we'll replace you. I said, no, you're not. Win, lose or draw. I'm going out there. And then Craig, Craig Branham won the grand championship. Mm -hmm. And uh, not saying it's because I was hurt. He was a good athlete, the cowboy, mm -hmm. great athlete. Mm -hmm. So when we did this French show, it was a team sport, two men, two women mm -hmm. against two men and two women against these certain obstacles at Fort Boyard. Mm -hmm. Well, when all was said and done and everything got reduced, I was captain of the Cavaliers mm -hmm. and I look across and there's Craig Branham, the guy I lost to in Gladiators. Wow. On the other side, small world. I went okay. Yeah, you, and then he he got cocky, mm -hmm. and I went, oh, okay, Craig. Uh, let me let me let you in on something. Uh -huh. He goes, what? I said, I don't have a concussion now. There you go. You better bring it. Well, one hundred percent. Yeah, and uh, I'm sorry to spoil it, but I ended up winning twenty five thousand. 
Wow. And you know what, Rico, talk about small world. It is a small world. Fort Boyal. Now, I watched that coincidentally in Strange Small World. I watched it on French TV because we had the rotating satellite dish when I was a kid. Yeah. And I speak yeah. fluent French. I speak French to my dad. So we would watch it on the French TV station, DF1, TF1. And but that was the French version. I remember there was Passepartout. There was a wizard, like a guy with a long beard, yep. and he yep. would and they would send out these little, uh, you know, what we would call shorter persons with keys, and they would go and unlock the keys. And I think there were lions in there or something at one point. Yeah, there were there was Bengal tigers when I did it. Bengal tigers. I mean, yeah, anybody. If you're looking for some exhilaration and watching a show of competition, I would strongly suggest Fort Wild. But how come I didn't know this, Rico? I didn't know you were on Fort Wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was called Keys to Fort Boyard. Then Aton Keller saw it and thought he could bring bring it back to America. So Got I it. was I was the pilot season. Got it. And we went there. And uh, they put the American twist on it. Yeah. So instead of Keys of Fort Boyard, it was Conquer Fort Boyard. Yeah. And that's on YouTube now. If you Google Conquer Fort Boyard, the show's on it, minus the commercials. Okay. You know, and uh, So they can with, find you on it? They can see you on that? Oh, yeah, yeah. You should see the whole show. Right. I'm actually going to watch that when we get off the air. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and like I said, there was myself and another gentleman named Thor and two women. Okay. And when we were planning mm -hmm. and stuff like that, I told Thor, I said, whatever Craig Branham, that captain goes up, I'm going. Mm -hmm. And you could take the other guy, but right. I will face him in every event because mm -hmm. I have a score to settle. And in every event, I beat him. So, so Rika, though, but what happened? Why didn't it get picked up? Because, I mean, that show was, I mean, did it get picked up? No. Then for one and done crazy because that was a great uh, like i said audience go and check out fort Boyal. i mean or the uh conquer fort fort, fort Boyal. Con this one ours was conquer yeah and like i said it's a, a fort that napoleon bonaparte built yeah to protect right. the coast of bordeaux right. but by the time he built it they could still fire cannons over and hit the coast yeah yeah so it went dormant for a while and they made it to like our alcatraz mm -hmm. so it was a prison mm -hmm. and then after that it was a tourist attraction and then somebody made it a competition yeah Very so that's that's the uh history of fort boyard very fascinating history a rich history and it is it's a beautiful uh, building it's oh. i remember seeing it when i was a kid thinking actually it was kind of terrifying yeah i think they pretended there were sharks around it or something like that or oh i didn't see any sharks but no. they but alcatraz has sharks you yeah. know so it could yeah but uh there was like five Bengal tigers guarding the treasure room Jeez. so but i really tell you i love the city of la rochelle mm -hmm. they accepted us as americans and uh I would go to people's house. They'd invite me to their houses and cook dinner and everything. I I, I love the people of La Rochelle. Yeah. They were just wonderful. Yeah. Well, we know that Paris welcomes you with open arms because, you know, you are the stylist. So let us not forget, you know, I know Rico's yeah. done many, many things, viewers, but he is the stylist. And speaking of the stylist, Rico. I did want to bring up something to you because I've been pondering this for several weeks now since AEW Wrestle Dream. Now oh. I know I know the caliber of talent that you are. I know the professionalism that you have and I know the style that you bring. Do you really think that Monsoor and Mason and MXM collection do you think they're really deserving of your talents Rika? Well, um, well, yes, I have the talent and I, I make or break mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. uh, they caught my interest because they are in tune with each other mm -hmm. and they're protégés right now. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not full on clients. No. They're protégés, but they have potential. Potential. They they really do have potential, and I I see that, and that's 
why I have a keen eye for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw it with Billy and Chuck and, uh, and I told them what my plan was and they bought into it and we were very successful Okay. until, until they didn't follow my direction. Yeah. You know, and, and backed out, yeah. you know, that, with all the accolades and the awards and everything I've won and, and mm. achieved, mm. that that is the only disappointment in my illustrious career. Yeah. Is when they backed out. Right. So I don't think Monsoor and Mason will back out. I think they understand the level mm. of of uh styling that I have mm -hmm. and I can make them. Mm -hmm. you know oh, oh. if they just follow directions oh yeah yeah Th there's no doubt in my mind that you can make them an international sensation right I, I was just merely stating to me as i was observing them from afar i see i see some holes in their uh performance i see some holes in their attitude and i just don't want i, I, I just i want i want your time to be put in a direction where it's most better going to be utilized. I don't want you to waste your time essentially as well. I, I understand, but uh, I haven't seen these holes yet. Okay. What, what makes you say you see these holes? What, what, what is on your mind? I mean, what do you see? I see um, a little lack of continuity. I, I don't see the closeness that's trying to be um, expressed to me through the camera. I don't see a well-oiled machine. You know, you you have some tag teams that are just natural. You know, we look back in the past like a demolition or a power and glory, uh, Legion of Doom. These two, Billy and Chuck, they just gelled so well together. Right. What I'm seeing with Monster and Mason is perhaps there's something underneath. Perhaps there's a a a, a rivalry that hasn't yet erupted between the two they don't seem to be on the same page and i don't think that they pay attention i don't think they listen well to instruction i'm just mm. saying i'm saying the match could have been won at wrestle dream it could yes have been it, it should have been won should they have had been. it they were going for the centerfold mm -hmm. uh, i will agree they got distracted mm -hmm. uh that was a little let down right there because they had it yeah. even the announcer said this is mx M's collections match to win. Yeah. They were they were listening. Mm -hmm. Uh I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I said, saggy ass got involved and yes. I, I couldn't coach after I got famous. Right. Yeah. You know, and, but, but, and but, but, but Rico, Rico, here it is. Here's the point. You should never have been left to be put in that position. They well, should have had your back. They yeah. should have your back, Rico. Well, all right. Well, I agree to disagree. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see. But have you had any communication since? Uh, oh, yes. You, okay. okay. Yes. I, I've been, you know, they were, they were very uh, disappointed because mm -hmm. they were going to end scissoring forever. Mm -hmm. You know, scissoring and it was, it was my debut and they felt really bad that they took the L mm -hmm. on a debut, which they should have taken the L. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a claims number. Mm -hmm. They really did. We talked about it prior. We went through uh, strategies. You know, I gave them my expert advice. You know, and we still took the L. But uh, afterwards, I tried to encourage them, you know, and. Uh, told them this is not the end. Okay, that's one. Mm -hmm. That's one loss out of possible 99 wins. Yeah. yeah. And I tried to get them undiscouraged mm -hmm. and I gave them a present. Yeah, we saw that. You know, and uh, they seem to be reignited. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still in communication. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, I got to work on it. It's going to be a rocky road. You know, they're young and uh, they're still learning. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to pour a little more effort mm -hmm. into this, you know, but I do see possibilities. I, I don't see exactly what you're seeing, mm -hmm. but I do see potential. 
you well, know, raw potential. I do see raw potential. Well, I feel so inspired, Rico, because you are a dear friend to me, a brother, a brother in Christ to me. I've just reached out to a contact of mine right now who reached right over to Mansoor, and I do have confirmation, I'm looking at it right now, that he will be joining us on this podcast, possibly next right. week or week after, but he will really? be. Yes, I just received okay. information. Okay, we'll straighten this out then. We can straighten this out there. We can yeah. ask him about what's going on. Like I said, I just want I'm just looking out for your best interests. That's I all. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's all. That's all. Um, but moving along to other other matters, you mentioned there Billy and Chuck. So I yes. do want to remind our viewers that Chuck and Rico will be reunited right here exclusively on Styling the Podcast. So that's coming up in December. We also have Peter Avalon. I just want to remind everybody of that, who just went back to AEW. I believe he was on uh, last week. He was on TV. So pretty Peter Avalon will be joining us, as well as Rob Conway will be coming. Oh, up. the Iron Man. The Legend. Iron The Iron oh. Man. Oh, the Iron Man still Rob. looks fantastic. Yep. Incredible. He is in incredible shape. So yeah. yeah, he he will be joining us. And now I guess tentatively we've got to wait and see uh if Wolf uh I hope he doesn't tuck his tail between his legs and run off to mommy, but I'm but Wolf, will he appear on style in the podcast? Only time will tell on that one. Time. Time will time. tell. Time. Well, time will tell. tell on that one that's interesting i hope he's up to the challenge yeah i hope i hope he is up to the challenge because i'd like to see the two of you duke it out and of course viewers again we do apologize situation was out of our control with ice Lori fetrick we hope she's okay because you never know what happens in life um i'm certain i will hear from her and we will reschedule and we'll get her back on the show um uh rico have you got uh anything special you'd like to say to the viewers before we depart perhaps a uh, tagline yes and it's my tagline i've lived by it and i want you to live by it and it's been very successful for me it's what your mind can conceive your heart can achieve and that's with anything mm -hmm. conceive it and then achieve it man uh, that, and I'm nobody special, folks. Mm -hmm. I am just like a re regular person. Mm -hmm. I just have a mindset. So work on it. Mm -hmm. And it's not perfection. It's progress. Mm -hmm. As yeah. long as you progress towards your goal, not perfection. Don't be hard on yourselves. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to do good. And there's going to be a drop back. Mm -hmm. You know, but allow it, expect it. But as long as you're moving in the right direction, you can achieve anything in your life. Amen. And I, I will, am living proof of that. I will second that. I will second that, ladies and gentlemen, which you, you know, you've got to focus on whatever it is that you're doing and you got to believe it. You know, uh, you know, Rico and I, we are believers. We, we love the Lord. So our faith is in Christ and we do pray before we we venture on and and take up any task that we do in life um rico it's been an absolute pleasure i'm also going to remind our audience right now the 2024 presidential elections are coming up oh it, yes yeah it is extremely important that you go out and vote uh your votes do count your voices do need to be heard we are at a pivotal point in american history and societal history so make yes. sure you go out and vote rico have you got anything else to say to that I'm going to echo that. And I said this the last podcast, I didn't vote in three elections. Uh, and I, I didn't have the right to say anything, but I voted these last elections, which gives me the right to say something because I exercised my right to vote. Mm -hmm. So everybody, uh, I, I, and I'm not saying vote this way, vote that way. You vote your heart. You vote your conscience, what you think will be best for America. Because right now, America needs what's best for us. Mm -hmm. We are in a bad way. We really are. We need change. Mm -hmm. We need positive change. We got to start focusing on us, mm -hmm. not everybody else in the world, mm -hmm. because this is a great nation. Mm -hmm. 
great nation and we need to make it a nation of unity again mm-hmm. where we're all on the same page we we could be agree to disagree yeah but we have to come together mm-hmm. or else we're going to leave ourselves open mm-hmm. for an attack or a division mm-hmm. and america should not be divided no no, no. I, I agree with you and it's it's it's, it's in scripture a house divided will fall Yes, it, it's it's just, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, whatever it may be, uh, you know, tumultuous marriage. Well, if it's divided, it will fall. It will not it will not hold ground, you know, make sure you build on a solid ground. So, yeah. And I echo those sentiments as well. I want to say that, you know, I love this country. I always have even before I came here as a youngster. So, you know, and for me to have the privilege now to call myself an American, you know, I I, I believe firmly in the country. I want to give thanks also to our servicemen and women out there. Servicemen and women, thank you so much for doing what you do to protect us here. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And thank you also to all of you. Thank you to all the new subscribers, the comments, yes. the likes, and everything that you're giving us. Thank you for uh, sharing your time with us. We hope that I you- I love the comments. The comments yeah. have been great. Keep commenting. We could, yeah. we could do so much more. Tell us what you want. Yeah. Tell us what you want to talk about. We're going to go super chat soon. Yep. So you'll be able to talk to us right there live. Yeah. You know, I I would love to just visit with all of you, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and I've, I've said this to you, Amir. Yeah. Wrestling's tough. I don't miss the hotels. I don't miss living out of a suitcase. Yeah. I don't miss going to the tables. Yeah. I don't miss that. Yeah. But what I do miss is those fans. Mm-hmm. I miss talking to the fans yeah. and I would go out after events and just sit and talk to the fans, take pictures and just listen what they had to say. When I'd stop by an Applebee's or TGI Fridays and Outback fans would come up and I'd be by myself and I'd say, why don't you sit with me, have yeah. dinner with me. Yeah. And all the fans would sit down and we'd just chat just like normal people. And it, it was always wonderful. That's yeah. what I miss mostly about wrestling is yeah. those fans. Well, you heard it right there, fans. So let's help make Rico's dream come true. Start writing us. Ask us your questions. Tell us what you would like for us to talk about. Interact with us. I invite you. It's an open platform. It's freedom of speech. Another uh, First Amendment here in the United States. So, yeah. And also make sure, everybody, that you do lay the smack down on that subscribe button Hit the likes, hit the notifications, share with your friends and family and across social media. We greatly appreciate it. But Rico, we have come to the conclusion of this episode of Style in the Podcast. So I'll let you- I got to show it off one more time. One more time. There it is. There it is. Version 2.0. Version 2.0, Rico Constantino, American. And also, by the way, I want to stress this. It's Rico- Constantino, not Rico Constantino. I know, but but Constantino's not so bad. That's Greek. Not, bad. not so bad. You know, Constantino is Sicilian. Yeah. So I tell people when they mess up my name, listen, I'm mozzarella cheese, not feta cheese. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. So I'm not saying anything bad about Greeks. They are yeah. wonderful people. Yeah. But I'm a mozzarella and yeah. they're feta. There you go. That's the way. If you, that's the way that everyone can remember it. Just think cheese, yeah. cheese, <laughs> mozzarella. Mozzarella. That's, that's that's the university I went to. That's a you. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> on that note, we will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. God bless every single one of you. God bless America. God bless America. Thank you.